all day we've been filming today and I've remembered to turn the mic on. Except for this one time. So, let's try this again. But today, we're going to have a look at putting in a water maker. Big boat, we do carry 200 gallons, but when you get uh, seven to 10 people on board, you know, you could really go through it. When you go out to the dry tortugas or someplace like that, or you're gonna be away from dock for more than, you know, a few days, I just, I'd like to have the, the extra water on board. Okay, so here we are in the mad scientist shop, and as you can see, it looks like a bomb went off in here. But it's my bomb. I know where everything in this shop is, and when people come in here and mess with it, I even know because it's out of place. Anyway, let's turn this off over here. This pretty interesting little gadget I made. This is a basic Hall Effect sensor. And what it does is I put screws on the outside of the fan blades, and a Hall Effect sensor just counts how many times things go by it. And then I ran it over here. This is my new gauge package because I'm a little uh, anal that way. Most people would just stick new gauges in. But me, I powered it up and now see the hours are running. And when the hours get to what the current hours are on the boat now, we will shut it all down and that's a whole nother project replacing the Yamar gauge packages. But anyway. We'll turn that off for now because it's just loud. So, today's project is to take all of this and turn it into this. So basically, we have our raw water intake, which is a 10 micron uh, screen. That'll get out most of the particulate matter that's in the seawater and stuff. You don't want to turn an RO machine on unless you're out in clean water. After that, we go through what we call our low pressure pump. This is capable of almost 400 gallons per hour at you know, 30 PSI, 40 PSI. And what that does is that gives us our supply demand for our larger uh, high pressure pump, which is over here. Now, so when it's coming in, it's gonna go through a one-way check valve, which goes into a T that's here, and then into our 10 micron filter, out of there, into our five micron filter, out of our five micron filter, all the way back around to our high pressure pump, out of our high pressure pump, into our membrane vessel, which this is our 40 inch membrane, and this is our 40 inch membrane vessel that we will mount under the <coughs> port front cabin to kind of balance out the boat. That's where I needed it. But So we're sending high pressure into the membrane um, it has about a 94% rejection rate, which means 94% of everything that goes through this thing, only, you know, 6% comes out in clean water through the membrane. When it comes out of the membrane, it will go over here to our, this will be our gauge setup. This is our high pressure shutoff switch, so it'll be running through the gauge, the high pressure, the 15 PSI, which we will never get above 1100 PSI, but that's a whole nother story. And what you do is when you slowly start to apply pressure to the membrane by closing the brine or the overboard, it starts to push water through the membrane and out the center channel of the membrane which then goes to our three-way valve, which is either going overboard, where we're watching our TDC meter, which is our total dissolved solids, and we'll be watching that meter, and when it gets to a point where it's, you know, uh, it's about uh, 80 parts per million or less, then we will be dumping, then we will turn our three-way valve, and it'll send it all over to the tank. Now we have a couple other things here. We have our flow switch. So as we dial this up, we will see our flow. It will start to rise on this gauge. And this gives us our gallons per hour and tells us how many you know, gallons per hour we're actually making. We have our on-off buttons for both our high pressure and our low pressure pumps. 
and that's about it now I know this looks like a big blown up mess right now and I've taken all the fittings that I can and then I've ordered a bunch more fittings that we'll see but basically the reason I'm going through all this is because I'm a little older than most of the uh, guys I'm about 50 and I don't want to climb under the front bed every time I want to make water for some guys that's okay there is going to be a kiss version of this which is basically keep it simple stupid and the pressure switch will be here the flow rate will be here I mean it'll all be right here and you just mount this and that and then your pre filters but the way I'm doing it I am building a remote unit with a remote head just you know for creature comfort and ease of operation for me my husband is down in the starboard crew coffin installing our new H2O maker desalinator or whatever you call them. Hi honey. We have to do this again. Do what? <laughs> Everything we just said. Oh. <coughs> do it! <laughs> So, what is it that you're doing? I am installing the pre-filters, the pump, and the low, uh, low pressure, high volume pump down there. Basically, I'm putting all that up here so that it's out of the way, and we move some of the weight forward. Because we're desperately low in the back. But anyway, um, so we're going to come in using the through hole that was for the head and put a three-way valve on it so that if somebody still wants to use the head they can change it but we got to make sure that it's open before somebody fires up the water maker but you'll know because the the pressure <coughs> on the main panel will never rise enough to be able to make it fire so but basically the water will come in come up here come into here and then go back behind me here to the pump and then down the high pressure line back into under the stairs where the main panel and the membrane is gotcha that seems to be the problem the large mess you got kicking here large mess is the least of my words what you doing Trying to finish a water maker, but it's like climbing Mount Everest. Three yeah. steps forward, two steps back. Guess where you get to go? Where do I get to go? I don't know, anyway, it's still a half inch tube. anywhere we're making water at four parts per million no there was quite a few leaks but quite the apparatus quite the apparatus I'm gonna turn uh, I can't really dial the pressure up Let's see how high it'll go but we turn the pressure down That's we'll give a full good. thing but see there's a membrane up in there and I utilized a air conditioner drain for my overboard instead of um, having to... Why does it look like it's leaking? 
No, it's not. It's just shiny. Alrighty. Turn the motor off. And then we still got... Want me to shut off? Yep, go ahead and shut your end off. So we got the water maker panel installed and up and running. Um, I'm real happy with the install so far. We've got no leakage. Um, but I'll give you a quick rundown on uh, how they work. So basically, you've got your water coming in from the from the sea up front, and it goes through the pre-filter and then through the two um, 10 and 20 micron filters then back around to the high pressure pump and over to here and we have a low pressure uh, line that goes up front so we can see our boost and when our boost gets up in here anywhere between 5 and uh, 5 and 10 psi that's that's plenty for our low boost and then we would turn our high pressure pump on and then we watch our needle over here and we slowly start to apply back pressure to the system by closing this valve by turning it to the right and we'll watch our high pressure needle start to rise. Now, a few things about um, the osmotic process. Basically, picture a screen door and you're trying to get bread through it. Well, bread won't go through a screen door, but water will. So take that and miniaturize it down on a smaller scale and that's what this does. Now, however, a membrane um, vessel is only good for, this one's only, the vessel itself is good up to 15 to 1800 PSI. However, okay, you think, well, if I'm getting 20 gallons a minute and we're only at 800 PSI, well, I can crank this thing on up to 1500 PSI. Now, that's not the case. Membrane can only go to its max rating, which ours is 21 gallons per hour. If I want to go to 42 gallons per hour, I have to add another membrane. Then I can boost the pressure. Pressure is irrelevant to, actually pressure is directly relevant to how much water you put out, yes, but if you put out too much pressure, you can force that bread through that screen door. And when you do, you blow holes in it, which ruins your, your, your membrane. So we watch it, and when it gets to 20 gallons, we don't even go to the 21. When we get to 20 gallons, we leave it alone, we let it run. Now, once it runs for a little while, we check our, this is what we call our total dissolved solids meter. And what it does is it tells me the input um, total dissolved solids, which is usually eight, 900 parts per million in seawater, and we drop it down to anything under 100. Um, once, it, once I see it drops down below the 100 mark, I go ahead and I switch the lever from overboard to the tank. Now we're putting, we, we're assuring ourselves that we're putting clean water into our tanks. So this is my freshwater flush monitor. Basically I can set it to minutes, days, and then when you set it, like now it'll come on for 11 seconds and then it'll be off for zero seconds. But what we set it at is it comes on for 20 minutes and then it's off for five days. And basically what that's doing is that's taking the pressure pump and our fresh water that's in our tank and flushing through the membrane. And what that's doing is it's keeping our membrane uh, fresh so that it doesn't get clogged with uh, overgrowth. I would be glad to demonstrate it however you can't, you cannot run something in um, this dirty of water or uh, it will just clog our pre-filters and our membrane within probably less than 15 minutes. Um, we need to be at least a couple miles offshore in really clean, clear water before we can start running. Well, that's a wrap on the Watermaker install. This is the display board over at Sailor Man where you can see some of the parts that I bought. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and if you want to see more, click on that subscribe. Thanks, we'll catch you next time.